Hey, what's up YouTube? It's your boy here, Mr. Hands. And today what I'm gonna show you is how to do your own furnace tune-up. No need of paying them guys a hundred dollars, ninety-nine, seventy-nine, or whatever kind of deal they're trying to say you can get when it's something real simple you can do yourself. All you need is a vacuum or dry vac of some kind, uh, a cloth, a little mini wire or um, a bent paper clip, anything, and a screwdriver. And um, a decent light, of course, so you can see in there. And I'm going to show you what all you need to do. Because the furnace, basically, everything they're going to check, the furnace checks itself. So if things ain't working right inside your furnace, it's not going to run. Plain and simple. The only thing you do want to do is make sure you got a good blue flame. And this um, little tune-up here that I'm going to show you is how you can guarantee yourself a nice flame every time you operate your furnace. Here, I already got the top off of there. Okay, come on with me. Now, our main focus is going to be to make sure the burners are all clean. The jets are all clean and most of all the flame sensor because you don't want a lot of soot on there. You want it to be able to sense if the flame is out or if the flame is on. So you want to make sure that's clean. And most of all, I want to let you know when you're cleaning it, do not touch the heat igniter. And this is a hot source igniter and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, this is your hot source igniter here. This guy right here. Do not touch that with your hands. You touch that, it'll burn out real quick and your furnace will be inoperable until that is replaced. It's very fragile too, so try to stay away from it while you're cleaning. You don't want to bump it, break it, or anything, or touch it. Just stay away from that unless you're replacing it with a new one. Now, you can use a flathead. I don't know what kind yours might be. Or you can use a socket, or whatever size yours may be. It could be different. But nevertheless, I'm going to do one. I'm not going to go through the video and do it each and every last one because that will be time consuming there. I'm going to do one to show you guys what you need to do and how simple it is just to keep these clean. Make sure you're burning a good flame each year. You're not getting any carbon monoxide and pretty much staying safe. You see how simple it slides forward and then out. You just want to want to clean it out brush those jets up in there in the burner and see if you can focus on that and just get that nice and cleaned up now while you have that off the purpose of your wire or your bent paper clip is to get in this little hole right here from where your gas comes out and your flame is actually burning it just get any loose debris that might be in there. Shouldn't be, but just make sure you poke that a couple of times. Just run it through there. And it's not really bad or needed, it, but just still just giving it a little brush. Do this for each and every last one of your burners. Make sure ain't nothing fill up inside of there. See it nice and clean. And let's reinstall it. 
and you want to do that for each one of your burners remember you want to clean your flame sensor this is your flame sensor and you will know that because it sits in front of your flame and like I said it detects if there's a flame going if there's no flame going it's going to shut the system down it's not going to let any glass flow if there's no flame going so we're going to get this out mix and clean it now this here it doesn't hurt if you touch it it's not going to damage it at all but you still want to be kind of gentle with it you don't want to be too rough with it okay let's set that aside well, like I said, mine's is not too bad. I just did one last year on here. But, you know, I do this every year. And what you want to do is get some emery cloth or you can use a Brillo pad too. And just clean any soot that you might find on here. It's just as simple as that, folks. Clean any soot that you may find on there. Like I said, I just did this last year, so mine's is not bad. And just replace it like you got it. That's pretty simple right there. The flame sensor is taken care of. Now I just have four more just to clean. And then I'm going to vacuum this guy out. All right, folks, we got those guys all out of there. You want to make sure that is all vacuumed out and wiped down. And you want to check your bottom of your furnace too, inside the squirrel cage. So those fins inside that squirrel cage can be a little sharp. You might just want to kind of lightly touch them. Don't stick your hand in there too rough or too fast or you surely will cut yourself. But if you change your filter quite often like you should, then you shouldn't have a problem. But if you moved into a house and you're not for sure how the last owner took care of it, that is something you will want to do just to make sure that that squirrel cage is clean. And not only that, we're going to vacuum up here too on and around the inducer motor because that's what pulls air in to circulate the air, what triggers your pressure switch here. They make sure the furnace got airflow to keep it flowing to pull out that carbon monoxide gases. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that, and I won't be able to talk because you won't hear me as clear so just um stay tuned in and listen for the vacuum i guess i don't know
Okay, now let's give her a test run so you can see this baby do what she's supposed to do. They ain't been red all year, folks, so it's gonna burn a little bit of dust and stuff off, but that flame will get blue here in a second. You hear my blower kick in, and this is exactly what it's supposed to do. 